I want to talk to you today about the future of Europe and about the future of the world as a whole, because today you cannot really separate these two. Everybody knows that the old order is in trouble, but does anybody know what the new order would look like? What new order will dominate the world? Do you know what is the new story of the world? To answer this question, let's start by briefly looking at a few of the old stories. During the 20th century, three big stories tried to explain the whole of human history and to offer a vision for the future of Europe and for the future of the world as a whole. These were the fascist, the communist, and the liberal stories. The fascist story said that history is a struggle between different nations, and fascism envisioned a world dominated by one human group that violently subdues all the others. The communist story explained that history is not a struggle between nations, but rather a struggle between classes. And communism envisioned a world in which all human groups are united by a centralized social system that ensures equality even at the price of freedom. The liberal story explains that history is a struggle not between nations and not between classes, but rather a struggle between liberty and tyranny. And liberalism envisioned a world in which all humans cooperate freely and peacefully with minimum central control, even at the price of some inequality. Now, the Second World War and the Cold War, as we all know, knocked out the fascist and communist stories. And for the last few decades, the world has been governed by the global liberal order. This order is based on the understanding that all humans share some core experiences and interests, that we are all subject to the same universal values, and that no human group is inherently superior to the others. Cooperation is therefore much more sensible than conflict. All humans should work together to protect our common values and to advance our common interests. That's what liberalism said. And to foster such cooperation, liberalism has advised us to strengthen international laws and organizations and to ease the movement of ideas, of goods, and of people across the globe. Now, though the global liberal order has had many faults and problems, it has proved superior to all the alternatives. The liberal world of the early 21st century is more prosperous, more healthy, and more peaceful than ever before. For the first time in human history, you are more likely to die from obesity than from starvation. For the first time in history, you are more likely to die from old age than from plague. And you are more likely to die from an accident than from human violence. The, is, the liberal miracle can be summarized in the idea that liberalism created a world in which sugar is more dangerous than gunpowder. The average Austrian today is far more likely to die from eating too much chocolate than from being blown up by Al-Qaeda or some other organization. That's the amazing liberal miracle. Nevertheless, people in Europe and in many other parts of the world are now losing faith in the liberal order. Nationalists and religious views that privilege one human group above all the others are back in fashion. Governments are increasingly restricting uh, the flow of ideas, of goods, and of people and are undermining international laws and international organizations. Walls are popping up everywhere, on the ground, in cyberspace, and especially inside the mind. The walls are beginning to rise again. 
if the liberal order, for whatever reason, is indeed collapsing, the big question to ask is what new kind of global order might replace it?